good evening everyone today is the sixth lecture of our lecture series on uh, structural design of cost effective lightweight hybrid multi story buildings using euro codes and uh, today we are, uh, we are starting a new topic uh, it is regarding uh, design of flange beams and we are so grateful for professor uh, mtr jayasinghe huh? for conducting this uh, invaluable lecture series uh, to uplift the uh, knowledge of uh, practicing engineers. Thank you very much, sir. And also uh, today, uh, the yeah, Chairman yeah. Civil Engineering Section Committee uh, informed uh, me that uh, he's unable to attend uh, the lecture today. So we will be continuing the lecture and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Vanduka. So we, we discussed all these things last time. And uh, we talked about the cube strength, cylinder strength, the properties, the important properties, the stress strain curve, this 0 0.002 and 0, 0 0.35 as you are here. And we also looked at stress strain curve for steel, the durability conditions, how to find the exposure and the cover, how to find the set. Using this equation, then I showed you what is the shortcut. What I didn't show you was this particular equation. That is, what is the maximum moment carrying capacity of a singly reinforced beam. What is the maximum moment carrying capacity of a singly reinforced beam? So you can just see it's given as 0.167 FCK BD squared and I'm going to show you how we get this magic number 0.167. It's a very important number so I'll stop here. So today is the sixth lecture. Sixth lecture. And the date is 10th, 2024. Civil Engineering Section Committee, page number one. So let's take a rectangular section and uh, we take right. now it's clear I hope so uh, now there's a maximum effect to uh, depth to the neutral axis, x is equal to 0.45 d. Then there's a s value, and this area that is in uh, compression, this is 0.8 times x. Then z is equal to d minus 0.8 x divided by 2 is equal to d minus. 0.8 x is 0.45 d divided by 2. m is equal to <coughs> force in concrete multiplied by z equals force in steel multiplied by z. Now in this earlier we used this equation that is 0.87 fy is a times z. That is the equation. But this time we are going to make this of this equation, and that is m is equal to fc is 0.567 fck because this stress maximum stress is 0.567 fck multiplied by area, area is breadth multiplied by 0.8 x, x is 0.45d. 
multiplied by lever arm that is d minus 0.8 divided by 0 0.45 d divided by 2. And uh, so I can write it again ms 0.567 fck multiplied by b multiplied by 0.8 times 0.45 d Point eight times point four five D zero point three six D multiplied by one minus point eight multiplied by point four five point eight multiplied by point four five divided by 2 that is 0 0.82 and when you multiply all these numbers you get 0 0.567 multiplied by 0 0.36 multiplied by 0 0.82 is 0 0.167 fck b d square so if I have a section 600 by 300, D is 545 millimeters and M is equal to 0.167 and we are using uh, FCK as 30 megapascal concrete. You divide by 30, multiplied by breadth 300, multiplied by depth 545 that into 10 to the power minus 6. So the answer is 0 0.167 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 300 multiplied by 545 multiplied by 545 446 kilonewton right is that clear Pandukra? So this is the maximum moment this section can carry as single reinforced. Is that clear, Banduka? Yeah. So uh, that is very clear. Is that right? So yes, basically, sir, that is clear. So if you want uh, five hundred as single reinforced capacity, what shall we do? We can use six hundred by one. What did happen? 600 by 400, 446 divided by 300, multiplied by 400. What is the capacity? 594. Because it will increase the width and improve the moment getting capacity. Is that clear, one? Yeah, yeah, that is clear, sir. Yeah. And then shall we calculate for uh, 446? What is MOB discard? 446 into the power 6. Breadth. Breadth is uh, 300. Depth is 545 square. What is the value here? 446 divided by 300. Divided by 545, divided by 545. 5.6. 5.6. 5.6. So you can see, can you I told you that, you know, let's keep MOB squared less than 3.5? Yeah, yes, clear. My right. Yeah, so generally when you select the section, why you keep it as uh, 3.5 is, you know, even 5 needs a lot of steel. Now, how much steel that this will need? And what we discard a file need 100 days of video 1.25. So, what is the A is needed? 
I am using shortcut. Huh? I am using shortcut just to find the answer. 1.25 into 3 into 544. Even this is 2043. So that means 5H25. When you go up to 5, you need 5H25. Is that clear? So that's why yeah, I keep it clear. around, uh, you know, 3.5. Then, because I told you the last day that, you know, we don't want a very high uh, amount of steel. Your steel is very expensive. So why not uh, make it slightly bigger and have more concrete? Now it's clear to you, I hope. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because you know, <clears throat> steel is the most expensive material, so we must try our best to minimize the steel. So one engineer told me that uh, he has designed a building, a large building, a very tall building, and uh, he has compared it to another project, which is half the height of his building. And he told me that, you know, both buildings have the same steel quantity. Now, let's say what he said was he has designed a very optimized building having 60 floors. And he has compared it with a typical design in Sri Lanka having 30 floors. Area-wise, the 60-story building is bigger. Right? Area-wise, it's bigger. Right? It's more than twice bigger. It's a big building. And he has compared it with a 30 story. This is just an example. And he said, you know, the amount of steel in the 30 story building is more than the amount of steel in the 60 story. Now, can you believe it? So, that's a kind of change. I mean, that's a amount of, um, that's a amount of uh, steel that can vary when you don't think carefully. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so so you have to be very careful. So when the, when you are selecting the member sizes, select the member sizes in such a way that uh, you know uh, we optimize what what we should optimize. So what shall we optimize? Slab thickness. You are generous. You select hundred cent. I say okay. No, I am not generous. I select hundred cent. The grid is 7 meter by 7.5 by 7.5. For the beam, instead of using 300, you use 400. What are the advantages? 400 is easier to cast. So there's plenty of space. 400 is the highest you feel capacity. 400 needs only a little amount of concrete extra to give the massive capacity. So there is no harm in using 400 because we have reduced the slab thickness by 600. So 7.5 multiplied by 7.5 multiplied by 0.175 versus 7.5 multiplied by 7.5 multiplied by 0.16. What is the what is the volume? The, the nine point eight um, for the left. Yeah. Nine for the right. Nine. So each one we give point eight meter cubes of concrete, which is has a value of about rupees. When you consider all inclusive cost, forty thousand. Uh, say 35,000. All inclusive value of 35,000 rupees. So, what did happen? I generally talk with the VAT, the VAT prices, right? Because uh, that's what we generally pay unless we are running a construction company. Right? So, it may be over 35,000. And uh, 
So, how much you save then? You need a large set, having a minimum of about 16 sets, 35,000 into 16. How much? 35,000 into 16. Minus sixty. What will happen? Multiply by sixty. Thirty-three million saved just by changing the thickness of the slab. Being very generous is to just the sufficient. Then why why do you have confidence to do that in a large building? The slab goes like this over the beams. This is 7.5 meters. Under 60 millimeter thickness. What will happen when the slab tries to, when the slab is continuous and slab tries to deflect? What happens? There will be some arching action developing. There will be some arching action developing. Are we considering this into account? Or ignored. We ignore it. We say it's going to be a pure inflection like this. So that's why the slabs appear stronger when they are properly made continuous. And that's why the stop reinforcement is essential. Is that clear, Bandhika? Yes, the sir. top frame is, is essential because of that reason. Uh -huh. Right? Okay? Okay. Yes. So, we have to think hard. Why? These days, money is, the construction cost has gone up drastically. It is not good. It is not good. Construction cost has gone up drastically. And this is not good. So, for example, pre COVID. So, 2018. What is the comfortable cost per square foot? 8,000 rupees to complete the book. Is that right? This range. 2024? Is that right? Yes, sir. In 2018, yeah, around that much, sir. Yes. Yes. 8 to 10,000, depending on the finishes, quality of the finishes. <laughs> now, what the value you are talking about? 15,000, 20,000. Price of an apartment, 35 million. What is the maximum you can sell today? 40 million. Anything above 40 million, no buyers. Very hard to find a buyer. Is that, is that correct? That is the ground situation. Is that right? I mean, Rupee has uh, devalued from 383 to 320. But what the increase in apartment price it is not the same way. Order. So what, what we need today? We need again going back to 10,000. Then only the projects will become viable and the Buyers will come, and because of that, the projects will become viable. People will uh, start investing in property. And why? Now you are offering uh, the value for money. You are offering pre COVID prices today. So there's a huge value for the investment. Because we do. Pre-COVID used to be 15% right. Today, 18% right. 
So we must go try our best to go for free coin prices to remain viable or to, if we want to revive the construction industry, we must go for free coin prices. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now this is what uh, we should understand as civil engineers. Why? Because we should never say this is quantity survey is job. No. It's a, it's a job of the quantity survey to calculate quantities and tell the rates, but whose job is optimization? Optimization is engineer's job, not quantity survey's job. Quantity survey, whatever the optimized structure, quantity survey will get the price. But it's not the job of the quantity survey to optimize, it's the job of the engineer to optimize. It is the job of the structural engineer, not even the architect. Is that clear? So you must always see how to optimize and what is the best tool for optimization. I'm again using the VAT included prices just to. So, meter cube of concrete, about these two include including blazing 40 to 45,000 rupees, depending on where you are placing the distance uh, that the truck mix has to travel because the diesel prices are very expensive. And uh, so there are so many parameters that you have to look at. One, turn of steel. How much is it? Three hundred fifty thousand. Turn along. So once you allow for wastage, fixing everything, it will come minimum four hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand per ton. And how does it come? Then? How does it come? If you take a slab, let's say we are having H10 at 200. Slab thickness is 124. The typical detail H10 at 200. So, top bus will come 0.38. So, the span is right. 4.5 meters. So this will be 1.5 meters. On this side, another 1.5 meters. So how many bars? What is the concrete value? Is 4.5 multiplied by 4.5 multiplied by 0 0.125. What is the concrete volume, by the way? So this is 4.5 by 4.5 span having 125 thickness. 2.53 cubic um, 2 meters. 2.53 meter cubes. How much steel? How much steel? Steel is 4.5 meters multiplied by 4.5. 4,500 divided by 200 into 2 plus 4.5, sorry, 1.5 into 4,500 divided by 200 multiplied by 4 plus distribution mass. Let's say I'm going to fix uh, 4 distribution mass, 4 into 4.5. Into, uh, I'm going to fix about uh, four, four uh, distribution mass or five distribution mass, four point five into two into I'll say uh, let's say I'll, I'll say about three. 
because uh, in the other direction also I have to connect some distribution. So how many bars? What is the length of the bars? 4.5. So the length of bars is. I got uh, around 438 meters. Uh, meters. Divided by 6? 73 bars. 73.12. Yeah. Let's say 75 bars. 75 means 75 divided by 272 tons. Multiplied by 1000, how many kilograms? There's a 10 milliliter bars. There are 272 bars per ton. So 75 divided by 272 multiplied by 1000. What is the value? 275. 275 kilograms. Huh? 275 kilograms. So 275 divided by 2.53. What is the answer? 108.9. One right kilograms per meter cube. So this slab means 110 kilograms per meter cube. Is that right? That is correct. So the volume is 2.53 meter cubes. What is the weight of steel? 275 kilograms. So how much steel? Per meter cube. 110 kilograms per meter cube. Is it clear, Vandu? Yeah, clear, clear, sir. So, this is a magic number. This 110 is a magic number. Why do I say? So now let's say I go for a bigger slab, 7.5 meter by 7. But still, this figure will remain between 110 to 120 kilograms. How? This might need H12 at 200. But the thickness is small. So when you divide the amount of steel by the thickness, again this comes to this figure. So this 110 to 120 kilograms per meter cube is a magic number. So slabs 110 to 120 kilograms per meter cube. Beams 160 to 200 kilograms per meter cube. Columns can be calculated on tributary area. Can you know why I did a calculation on tributary area on the first day? Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. So, even before Designing even before designing a reinforced concrete structure. What can you do? You can tell the quantity of reinforcement. Is that right? Yes. So now let's say we are having uh, some moderate steps, five meter, five five meter. Now, how could I make it less? How can I make it 100? You know, Ford says, there's something called middle strips. 
and engines. So, where do you provide what you calculate? Where do you provide what you calculate? Only the middle stream. What do you need in the exchange? How? Huh? But we are also concerned about this 3D rule. There are 4D rules, 3D rules. So we don't like the uh, reinforcement to be very far away. So how can we optimize? Let's take another typical example. Let's say we have a slab. 6 meters in one direction, 4.5 meters in the other direction. These are typical cases that you get in apartment buildings. Why? Because you need a big living room without beams, intermediate beams. So how can you optimize? So the deflection is based on shorter span. So that means 120 is enough. 120 millimeter thickness is enough. So now we are going to break it into middle ships and edge ships. So whatever we calculate is applicable here. So what we do is in the shorter direction we use H tape. In the longer direction, we use H tape on the H. So if you have H10 in one direction, H8 in the other direction, can there be deformations in the reinforcement? The minimum deformations will be there unless you are you have been very careless. You always step on the joint. You don't step on the Middle of a bar. So always when you are walking, you step on the joint. So if one bar is 10 millimeter, can the other bar bend? Can the 8 millimeter bar bend if you are stepping on the joint? Mandubai? Mm -hmm. It is uh, it helps. unlikely. Because you know, you have to be careful. When you are walking, you, you can't. You, you know, when it's 10 minutes in both directions, you can walk without worry about the deformation of the reinforcement. But when you have 8 millimeters in one direction, what are you going to do? You will walk stepping on the joint. When you step on the joint, can, can, the, can the reinforcement deform? It cannot. Okay? So, by doing this, what, what are you going to achieve? What's your target? 90 kilograms per minute. And uh, a large slab like this, you might, one might say, oh, I'm going for 150 minutes. Instead of that, you go for 120 minutes. And you reduce the amount of steel to, to this from 110 kilograms per minute. Now you have to have better quality assurance. QA, QC has to be better. You have to train the people once. This is how I want it. And uh, here you might have H10 at 200. And in this case, you might have H10 at 300. More work. More work. But every piece of steel is expensive. And you are going to repeat it 30 floors. Is it worth optimizing? Is it worth optimizing? Yes, it's worth of optimizing. Of course. Right. Yeah. Because you are going to repeat whatever you saved over 30 floors. And I showed in the early example, if you have 30 floors, 60 floors, your client will save 30 over 30 million rupees in concrete alone. Now here you are saving on steel as well. Because this magic number, 110 to 120, 
we are trying our best to bring it down to 95 to 90 to 95. How are we doing that? Ten extend. How many bars per ton? H8, 420. So 400 divided by 272, how much is it? One point five. So you can see there's one third saving in steel. One third saving in steel. The moment you use H8 instead of H10, one third saving in steel. And H8 is readily available by reputed manufacturers like Langma, Melva, CN Steels. All those have, have quality or DTB. They all, I'm not very sure about DTB, but others, Melwa, Langwa, they all manufacture 8 mm. So you buy 8 mm or CST. They all buy, they all manufacture 8 mm. So you buy 8 mm. These are the steel manufactured from Billest. So you buy proper steel. Without any, uh, because these are all st very important structural members, so you cannot take a risk. So you go for the quality products, which are which have been manufactured at correct temperatures. And what you do is, you will save a lot per slab with better QA QC. So you have to have a team of BSc engineers who will work round the clock, check everything, ensure that you know people don't when people walk, they walk carefully, they don't bend the bars and they do everything properly. Lot of extra work, but routine. Extra work, routine means a higher quality assurance. Because you are doing the same thing over 30 floors, but different, not the same, not the traditional. You need more information to be converted when you are fixing the races. It is not just H, H10 at 200 everywhere. No, it's different. But every place you save steel. And the deflection is calculated on the basis of shorter span. So my, what matters is the shorter span steel, not the longer span steel. So what is our shorter span steel? H H10, H10, H10. So can there be any failure in your strands? No. At the critical section, we have used the standard value. H10, what are the spacing? Other places, we are optimized and we end up with a highly optimum slab. Why? We are going to repeat the same slab 30 times, 40 times, 50 times, 60 times, depending on the height of the beam. And that's where we are going to win the battle for at least 12,000 rupees per square foot. Current prices. It has early heat lesser, but this 12,000 includes VAT at 18 percent and it includes uh, what else? Finishers, partitions, there's a lot of things. And another thing you can try is. Another thing you can try is you will make the slab thin. When the slab is thin, what you do is you have the reinforcement like this. You will fix vertical reinforcement like that. 
fix a vertical reinforcement and tie a tape. This is the tape. And you level it. So you level it and then remove the bar. So how do you remove the bar? You have the reinforcement like this. And you fix the bar like this. Bend it and fix it. So what you do is you turn it. This is only a small thing. Turn it. Withdraw it. Because when the concrete is fresh, once the level is established, you remove the binding here. Because it is it has a small hook type of thing. You push it down. Turn it. And... Gradually, you withdraw it while pushing it down. So, what will happen? The hole made will be filled up again by concrete. So, you withdraw it. So, the levels are perfectly done. So, you do everything perfectly, but slowly. Because when you do it things fast, you can't do all these things. Little slow. You remove this. Then what I'm going to do? Then what I'm going to do is you are going to mix tile grout with sand, fine sand. And you will not play tiles on grout of 10 millimeter. You lay tiles on tile Grout, sand mix of 15 millimeter. Here you need a tile bed or leveling uh, street. Here no tile bed. Here use grout. Here use tile grout and one is to one tile grout and sand mix. Cost wise, very similar. The tie grout is expensive, but cost wise is very similar. But what do, what do you avoid? You avoid 25 to 30 millimeters of tie weight. And in doing so, what do you, so what is the allowance for finishers here? Or even 0.4 will work. But we will go for 0.5. Here you need 0.75 to 1 kilonewtons per. Every floor, 30 story building, we save 0.5 into 30 or 15 kilonewtons per. Minute. A substantial question. Because the bearing capacity of the soil may be about 200 kilonewtons per meter square. I'm not talking about a pile foundation case, but without pile foundation. There are foundation. Cellular raft. Generally, you don't think about having a cellular raft for a 30 story building. But it's possible when you have two basements. And a cellular raft foundation. Why? Why is it possible? Because in Sri Lanka we have laterite soil. And the bearing capacity can be at a depth might be 300 to 400 kilonewtons per meter. Because you know as the depth increases the bearing capacity increases in soil. Due to what? Due to what? We know when the soil behaves you have the foundation, there's a wedge, this moves up. When the overburden is high, what happens? This cannot move up easily. So, what happens? Bearing capacity increases. So, as the, you go down, because there's a huge confinement from surrounding areas, what will happen? The bearing capacity will be more. So, you cannot. 
deformed by squeezing out. It has to remain where it is. Why? There's huge overnight. So the bearing capacity increases as you go down. So the bearing capacity may be 300 to 1. And compared with this, by doing without a tile joint, you might allocate 15 kN per meter squared less for finishes. Is that clear, Vandukar? Yes, that is clear, sir. Yeah. So you can see, if you want to hit these magic numbers of 10,000 rupees from 20,000, what do you need? Optimization at every level. And it will finally give you a product which is as economical as possible. But this is a conventional optimization. Then there are other methods via, via, which involves pre, pre casting. Where we remove the founder's shattering cost to a significant level, then we uh, target slab thicknesses like 9 to 100 mm. So those things will come later. And that's why we, we, we said these lightweight hybrid multi-story construction. Still I am in the conventional slab design, but uh, I am taking you to a new height where uh, I am telling you to optimize Things that you generally don't consider as important. Optimize all the time. So if we come back to the main thing that we started, we have a beam 300 by 600. And if you want a higher capacity, what are you going to do? Increase the steel, no? Make it 400 by 600. This has 594 capacity. This has about 400. 400 capacity. Let's say 400. This close to 600. This 440. Right? So you can see. Just by increasing the width of the beam by 100 millimeters, you can make it to remain as single. single. Then, what is double reinforced? So, if you want this, the capacity that we calculated was uh, 446 with 300 millimeter thickness, 600 depth. And let's say you want 594 carriage, but you don't like to increase the thickness. Say, let's say 500 being carried. Then, well, the method is simple. Let's say this carries 0.167 FCK B B squared or 446. What is the remainder? Remainder is 54. Then, who is going to carry that 54? A dash, here you get A S plus A dash. So we carry that. This is D dash, this is D. Who is going to carry the remaining 54? A S dash, 0.87. A five five hundred. This area, this this area, this stress multiplied by lever arm. Lever arm is d minus d dash. So straight away you can find the extra steel. What is that? 
is these 545, these 55, so 190, 54 into 10 to the power 6, 0.87 and by 500 is that by uh, 490. How much extra steel needed to carry a moment up to 500 with the width of 300? Bandhu, what is the area? 100. 54 divided by 0.87 divided by 500 divided by 490 divided by 490. Multiply by 500. 253 millimeters square. So we need 1 H uh, 20 to carry this extra compression. But what is the cost? Over 6 meters. How many 20 millimeter bars per ton? 65. So 500,000. Divided by 65. 7,700 rupees. But on the other hand, you can increase the thickness by 50 millimeters. Make it 350. Then you come closer to 500 capacity and you can avoid the use of extra time. On the other hand, to make the section bigger, 400, now you can remain even less than the, the steel quantity can become less. So what is the, what's an important parameter? Always we think for a beam, depth is the important parameter. But finally you are finding, with this also, can be a saver. We increase the width. We are saving steel because the moment width is more, width of the within compression is more, the carrying capacity increases. Carrying capacity increases. So we call this doubly reinforced. So how to design a doubly reinforced beam? Find the maximum capacity of singly. That is uh, 546, 446. And you want to carry 500. Who is going to carry the extra 54? Extra 54 is carried by steam acting in conjunction with compression. Compressive steam. So you get steel in compression, steel in tension. Poor design. But you might ask. So if you were in a structure, we will select. Let's take a B building like this. The building. And you have selected these sizes 600 by 400. And suddenly somebody come and say, okay, no. We want a small alteration in your design, but I don't like uh, you using different different member sizes. I want you to, the beams to be 600 by 300. I don't want it change, 600 depth. I don't want it change. But I like this to be designed for 10 kilonewtons per meter squared because I'm going to use it as a storage. Now what happens? Okay, now 10 cannot be taken by uh, 125 slab. So we make it 160. So what will happen to GK? 
increase. What has happened to Q phase? Increase. So you'll find 1.35 dK plus 1.5 QK is now has gone up to about 22, 22 kilonewtons per minute. It has increased drastically. 22 instead of 10 to 12. Can you remember I told you magic number? 10 to, 2, 10 to 12 kilonewtons per meter square. It has suddenly gone up to 20 to 25, 22 because uh, somebody has said, no, I would like this uh, this part of the building to be designed for a higher load uh, with a higher thickness for the slab so that I can uh, have a racking system and go up to 10 kilonewtons per meter square. And I don't want you to show that it is a storage area. I like uh, it to be all shown as one building. So I don't want you to use uh, big columns. Uh, so the columns will be anyway big because we are designing for earthquake. But uh, I don't want you to use big beams. Slab thickness I don't mind increasing because uh, nobody can see the th thickness of the slab. So suddenly you find you are in a situation where uh, you might find uh, the one that you have designed as considered as singly has now suddenly become doubly and you have to find the extra rates. And then the method is what I showed you a few minutes ago. Is that clear, Banduka? Yes, that is clear, sir. Yeah. So you can see, I mean, all these situations can arise when you are doing a design. Okay. That'll be ready for it. So what it means? Okay, now if you have a wide beam, it need not it need to be only wide at the compression front. It need not be wide elsewhere. So this is called branch. This called flange. So there are different varieties. And you know what is what matters is width. Where? Not at the level where the tension reinforcement is provided, but only at the level where the where the uh, compression takes place. So we say we call it H. Plant width. Right? And this is B. This is D. Okay, all the notations are the same. So, how do you design a plant field? How do you design a plant field? How do you get a plant D? Because in the span, we have a slab cast in situ with beam. So this is in compression, this is in tension. So we can make this a part of the slab to carry compression. So that's how you get a flange beam in the span sections. Is that clear? Yes, yes, sir. But over the support, Compression here, tension here, no flange action, no flange action. So when you are selecting the width of the rib, consider this situation, you see whether it's 300 or 400, whatever the answer, it will all depend on the moment over the subject. But I told you, with moment redistribution, we are going to reduce the moment of the support at least by 10 percent at least by 10 percent so with that again we can see you don't have to ex use excessive width by reducing the moment of the support by using moment redistribution you can have enough space to have sufficient red response and never make never Make sure it doesn't need any, uh, it needs only the tension reinforcement. It doesn't need any compression reinforcement. These are not there, it's all carried by 
complete and you need some tension reinforcement then that is also minimum provided what is provided is the minimum they are minimum to carry the moment or the support where you have done at least 10% resistance you have done at least 10% resistance is that clear so we yes. even in a in situ cast situation the width of the beam should be decided by considering the moment or the support where we like mobd square to be in the range of 3.5 where we like mobd square to be in the range of 3.5 is it clear madhukar yes that is clear yeah now we have the flange beam so flange beams are very 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 efficient flange beams are extremely efficient. why we are getting 125 mm thick flange so i we did a small mistake here this bf not hf bf breadth of the flange so let's say we have beam of 300 wide and this uh, is a uh, 900 900 or all depth is 600 540 mm 30 mega pascal how to design do the design use shortcut method so the normal method d is equal to so is it is equal to first you calculate k m over fck b d squared calculate k definitely it will be less than 0.167 why your massive width for the flange b f And this B is it is equal D point five plus square root of point two five minus K O one point one six. Calculate it. Just calculate it. Calculate reinforcement is yes. same. Now we say force in concrete is equal to force in steel, and this side is 0.87 Fy As on this side. Let's assume the we calculate S multiplied by B multiplied by point five six seven F Y stress multiplied by area. We calculate this, and we should show it is less than height of the flange H F. In this case, one hundred. And we know. The maximum moment carry capacity of a normal section is 545, sorry, 446 kilonewton meters. So let's say we have a moment of 450 kilonewton meters on this flange to be. And uh, I can calculate the reinforcement using shortcut method. So M over B D squared. You can use this method and find the reinforcement, but I'll use the shortcut method to save time. So 450 into 10 to the power six divided by breadth 900 depth 445 squared. Panduka, what is the value? One point six eight three. 
one by six eight. Okay, hundred. Yes. Uh, we say one by six eight equal to one by seven, right? So what is hundred days of BT? Divided by four. What is the value? One by seven divided by four. Zero point four two five. Then what is S? You know, this is a big moment. Huh? This 450 kilonewton meters is a big moment. That is more two, than two, the water or this section can carry as a rectangular. 2084.6. So, I'll provide. Three H25 plus two H20. That is uh, 628 plus 490 into 3. What is the answer? 628 plus 490 into 3. What is the answer? Uh, 2,100. Yeah. 2,100. So it's okay. Huh? Yes. It is okay. Right? 2,090. 2098, exactly. 98 or 90? 2098. 98. So now I substitute S multiplied by 900, multiplied by 0.567 into 30, equal to 0.87, divided by 2090. What is this? Say so uh, 0.87 into 500 into 2098. 2098 divided by 900 divided by 0.567 divided by 30. I'm, I'm just substituting in this equation. Ah, okay, so 59.61. Uh, 59.61. 59 59 59 59 59 Where is it? 60. This 125 tick. Enough. So this part is incomplete. Got it? Yes, sir. So this is how you design a flange beam. We will forget about flange beam. We just design a rectangular beam, tabulate S, and then find that S. Find S. Okay. And if S is within Branch, no problem. If this is here, then you have a problem. Very unlikely, very, very, very unlikely situation. Why? Branches are wide, so you cannot have this kind of situation. Very unlikely. Doesn't happen. So textbooks spend a lot of time covering these cases, but they never offer impacts. Is that clear, Mandalia? Yes, that is clear. It can never come, uh, but if it comes here, there's a big problem. Why? This is air. Air can't carry concrete, compression. Right? Then, we have a simple solution for that. We have simple solution. Solution is we say these nine hundred BF nine hundred we say M max. HF, the max is equal to 
cos is hf multiplied by bf multiplied by 0.567 why f f c k f c k multiplied by lever arm z is equal to d minus hf divided by p so we calculate this value that is 125 multiplied by 900 925 by 0.567 multiplied by with 30 concrete multiplied by d d is uh, 545 minus 125 divided by 2 and what is the value multiplied by 10 to the power 6 minus m max what is the M max value Bangalore? 923.32. If M actual less than M max, do you have to take check anything? You don't have to check anything. Why? The front beam can carry a maximum amount of 923. And if our moment is 600, do we have to check anything? No. We don't have to check anything. Is that clear? Yes, clear. So either you do this method. Designing the uh, plant B with compression reinforcement. Extremely, extremely foolish design. Extremely foolish design. And with that, shall we wind up? Oh, okay, sir. I can answer the questions. Yeah, um, there's one question. In uh, there is a steel, steel is a uh, class B. What we, the steel that we use, that's all based on earthquake resistance. So the steel manufactured in Sri Lanka is class B. Uh -huh. So what is available in Sri Lanka is 500B. That's why we get good. They oh. simply say 500 QST bars. Right? Uh -huh. We don't manufacture C. We don't manufacture A. C is for high seismic load. A is not very good, so we don't use it because when you bend, A, A might fracture. So what you use is B, which is more ductile. B is more ductile than A. Okay, Bandhuga? Okay, sir. I think... Uh, that's all? That's, today, I think... We don't have many questions. We don't have today many questions, it seems. Yeah. Since it's a new but, uh, yeah. section, I think. Yeah, but uh, you could understand it easily. Yeah, yeah, we understand, understood it. And uh, some points are very interesting as well, so those optimizations. Yes, optimization, I mean, the, the code allow us to go for a strip, end strips, middle strips, end strips. Mm -hmm. What we do? We think, you know, our construction supervision is very poor. And our guys will mess up like hell. And we so don't use 8 meter bars. We use 10, one, one size bar. Either 12 or 10. Same yeah. size everywhere. But uh, yeah, that's why we need engineers. You know, if you do a construction in Australia, huge number of engineers are involved. They, they all have different roles to play. And engineers have job sets. We, we spend a lot of money. Without employing engineers, we waste money and it's unsustainable construction. Because in sustainable construction, we must use 
minimum amount of materials. Because materials are natural things. Once you bury it in the building, it's gone. So we have limited materials. So why are you wasting? Rather than wasting all these materials, save money and pay part of that money as the salaries of the QA, QC engineers. Who will assure that everything is done perfectly? And so here, it seems a major constraint for these optimizations. It seems like uh, the lack of uh, QA, QC engineering practice, it yes. seems. Yes, yes, basically our Sri Lankan problem is we are stingy spending money on salary of people. But we are very generous spending money on materials. We don't worry about it. No, we should worry about the material. Why? Material is more expensive. To convert 100,000 rupees worth of material, you need only 35,000 labor. So why not make it 40,000 and save more material by having QAQC guys? At the side, because you are not going to have 10 QVCs, guys. Only one or two engineers, uh, if you are, depending on the scale of the site, sometimes you can even manage it one QVCs. But on the, generally, it's good to have two QVCs engineers because trend, the be better surveillance, and if it is going on, uh, if it's a 16 hour site, two sets, a 24 hour site, three sets of engineers, so that they can, they don't have to. Uh, they can rotate and, uh, you know, only once, uh, twice a week, they have to take the night shift. Other days, they do the day shift. So likewise, you are rotate. But you don't want people, uh, you know, not sleeping over the, every night. <coughs> you can rotate it. So that once in a while, they don't sleep. But the, the following, after eight hours, they take a rest. So that they are all fresh. So you don't have to pay 500,000 for a QAQC engineer because you are always make sure that there's a ready market for young engineers who are entering the field to study as QAQC engineers. So they, they learn construction as QAQC engineers. But uh, construction is done by experienced construction engineers. And the task of the QAQC engineers is to keep the records while learning how to do the construction. So that way, construction industry will also develop very well. Because all the engineers start as QAQC engineers, one or two years. And then they become construction engineers. Then they become design engineers after getting the construction experience. Within four years, you have an expert engineer, not just an engineer, expert engineer who knows how to optimize and produce good designs. And that's the need of the hour. So that's the only way forward for us. Because we are in a crisis and we have to make sure the per square foot price comes down to 10 to 12,000 or 8 to 10,000. 10, and we, I don't care about what the price because my prices should be the, the cost of construction per square foot for the structure should be less than, uh, sorry, for the whole thing should be less than 10,000 rupees per square foot. That's my no. And I will try and do everything possible to achieve it. And if anybody says 15 to 20,000, I will say, okay, don't worry, I'll do value engineering. And I can even have the QAQC team from my side uh, where the client pays from his saving. Client pays from his saving. Right? So, because uh, clients' engineers have huge authority over the site, not the contractor's engineer. If they have to be the client's engineer. So QAQC engineers should be paid by the client. So they are client's engineers. Client's engineers have the highest authority at the site. They, they have higher authority than even the consultant because uh, they are representing the client. Client is the man who provides money so he has the highest authority. Then the consult then comes the consultant. Then come the who has the least authority is the contractor. Contractor should abide by the conditions laid down by the client and the consultant. So consultant. So that's why you know in large projects the client hires a project manager, pays over one million. 
so that he is in charge of the whole project. Everybody comes, even including consultants, will have to work under the client's project manager. He's the top man. And those people are, those top clients' project managers are today paid in the range of two to three million rupees per month. And uh, so that person should be extremely knowledgeable. That's why client employ to get the project done. He's the project manager of the client. And then all the others will come below. So that's the kind of structure that we need in Sri Lanka if you are to come out of the current mess. Because if you are to kickstart, you have to give good products to the clients, the quality assured, strong, durable buildings. That's our norm. That's our motto. So we have to go for it. Okay, Vandugal? Okay, sir. And one last question. Uh, yeah. yes. In iStruct E detailing manual, HBC notations have been specified for uh, uh, reinforced detailing. Can you clarify on that, sir? Yeah. Uh, H is high height and side bars. What is that? Uh, yeah. H, B, and C notations. Yeah, but I generally use H. What is B and C? I am not very sure. I'll just, uh, they can tell us where they, they find all this information, then we can uh, just look at it. But generally, I use H. As I found it from the ISTRAC team on work based on the type of the Type uh, 500 A, B, C. No, 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 no. In Sri Lanka, you don't have to worry because you know, sorry, Sri Lanka, we have only a B type, B type. Okay. Right? Because uh, we, we don't manufacture A and C. No, no, sir. It says that uh, if we use the H, that means we can use the all the three types. If we yeah. go for the bridges, uh, because of we have to consider about the ductility, mm -hmm. in that yeah. case, we can use only oh. the B. Uh, B and, B and C. Yes. Yeah, then, the the expectation should be B. Sir. B. All ah, right, right, right. Oh, yes. So, you are referring to a, a case that you encounter in uh, uh, bridges. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, but basically, uh, in B Sri Lanka, we can use H because we have only one type of C. We don't have oh, two, okay. three types. We have only B type. Type B. Okay. okay. Because manufacturers are some allowed to manufacture B. They are not allowed to manufacture A or C. Right? C is uh, more ductile and it is not manufactured in because more more work to manufacture it. A is not allowed. It's only B. Right? And AJ is we are a small country without earthquakes, so so ideal is okay, stick to it one type, which is the good type, that is a B type. Because we don't need C. Right? Okay. Okay. And, and if, Sampa, to, uh, if possible, uh, please share that reference to our group as well. Uh, so okay. he says H is by two uh, something because that is the that is the height. Because the uh, river arm is uh, so the whole thing is in uh, compression. So uh, river arm is said. Is equal to D minus HF by 2. This HF. This HF by 2. Okay. That's, a, that's a, another question. There's another question, I think. Yeah, there was one. The, the question uh, Code specify minimum reinforcement that we have to provide in both oh, direction of cell. Be because minimum reinforcement is to prevent thermal and Thermal and shrinkage cut. He's asking, can we reduce that reinforcement less than that? No, 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 no. Don't reduce anything below the minimum. <laughs> so okay. If you reduce it be below the minimum, then then there's no 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 meaning for the minimum. Mm, yes. Right. <laughs> when you say minimum, minimum is minimum. So you can't go be less than minimum, right? Okay, sir. Can you see the argument? I mean, minimum is minimum, so you have to try it. You know, that's so uh, preventing the thermal land, early thermal land, so you can hear. And if you provide anything less than that, you are running the danger of structure cracking before loading. The that is that, 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 that uh, minimum reinforcement criteria for the one condition for the uh, detailing, no? So you can't. No, no, no. That is for the detailing, not for the design. Yeah. 
So in design also, we check whether we are we are below the minimum or above the minimum. Yeah. yeah but but minimum is minimum, so we have to provide. That's why you know, instead of cars construction is has a limit on optimization. And uh, that is the very reason we go for precast construction when you want to optimize. And that's uh, what I'm going to show in the next. Uh, I mean, in the next few months, you will learn, you know, why precast is so superior to instead cast construction. Okay, sir. So, and thank you, Engineer uh, Samad, also for joining. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and this uh, this is actually this uh, uh, flat beam uh, 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 designing. The all engineers are day to day; they are doing that one. But we day, today we got a lot of short shortcuts for to design this very short time period. So very mm -hmm. interesting, uh, professors to share this knowledge to uh, the young engineers mm -hmm. and as well as the practical engineers. Oh yeah, yes, so much. Yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, our friend. Yes. <laughs> even in, uh, you know, the problem is when we teach, we are given a limited time. At yeah. the university, even at MSc, we yeah. are not given a lot of time. We are given only a limited time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. But today, you know, in this lecture, we have no limit. Yeah, right? correct. Yes. So yes. we are going to teach you everything. Yeah, yeah. But uh, slowly, yeah. not, not, in, uh, not in, uh, we don't have a target. We, we, yeah. Our target is teach as much as possible. Ah, yes, right? yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay right. Sir. Okay, okay, then. Sir. Okay, okay, sir. Right, and, uh, thank you. Yeah, I would like to invite uh, Engineer Mangala Siri uh, to do the word of thank. <clears throat> Good evening to all. Thank you all for staying with us this lecture with a lot of, lot of learning. Today was the sixth lecture. Uh, on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to express our heart gratitude to Professor Tishan Jai Singh for informative and valuable presentation. Dear sir, we highly appreciate your effort and time spending on enlightening us. I am sure all participants had gained a lot of knowledge through your comprehensive explanation. Thank you very much. Then I would like to express our sincere gratitude to Civil Engineering Section Committee Chairman, Engineer Mangala Silva, ISL Secretariat, uh, the publicity department and IT team for their valuable support and encouragement to success this lecture series. Also, today we had around uh, 148 participants, so we really appreciate your participation. Finally, as I said, <coughs> that uh, next lecture will be on next Wednesday, so we hope to see all you there. Uh, thank you. Good night. Okay. Thank it's you. It's not a holiday. It's not a holiday. It's time uh, uh, I believe uh, 15. 15. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, so no problem. No problem. Right. We can have the lecture. Okay. Generally, I keep all Wednesdays free as as I try my best to keep Wednesdays free unless there's absolutely absolute crisis. I will uh, conduct the lecture. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, okay, good night. Okay, thank okay, you very thank much, you. everyone. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>